Yo, it's Peter Bell. Sorry I don't have a good microphone here, but I wanted to rip through this really quick. Documents 151 pages long, and <laughs> we have 150 acres. Uh, I wrote it in March, the end of the month, and it's all about our Lexington project. So there's two operating mines within 10 miles, which is a great start. Check, check, check. Make sure we're recording, which we are. Hundred and fifty acres in there, what's it worth? Hard to say. Um, let's have a look at some studies, let's have a look at some production numbers. So sixty five thousand ounces. Okay, that's production at Gold Road from night in the nineties. Oh, not bad. <laughs> Three hundred and fifty dollars an ounce. Let's add a zero, you know, and what's the historic? And really. 300,000 ounces in 1923, big numbers. 300,000 ounces, 50,000 ounces in 95. Do we care? I say so. This is a model that was made for a junior miner called Para Resources. It's a bit of a joke, um, as all PEAs really are. Um, we're looking at plus or minus 20, 30, 40, 50% on key assumptions here. And I don't know about the mine models. Um, maybe I'm being too harsh, you know, prove me wrong. But these resources are typically very um, uncertain. But they are useful. And this company did a great job putting this together. For a junior to do this, very ambitious. I would say technically very successful. However, um, this company, Power Resources, also tried to put it into production at some significant scale. That picture on the front might actually be from when they put it into production. And after that, they lost money and went bankrupt and sold the company to Aura Minerals for a dollar. So, however good the PEA looks, um, understand that the project quickly went bankrupt and is now being operated by this globally integrated miner whose projects in Brazil, I think, and Central America. Very, and I think this is their only one in the US. And, and it's in production underground, 750,000 ounces. Um, historic production, they're citing from Gold Road. Well, okay, let's, uh, we'll dig into a, a cross section of their mine later and try and guess at how many more ounces might be sitting around this super gene enrichment zone that they probably didn't finish mining out at the red mark here in the center of the screen. So this is the Oatman Highway, very cool spot. You're up into Silver Wash up here, which is upstream of the Moss Mine with Northern Vertex. And this is an old mining camp, right? This cluster of markers indicates an old mining camp. And the red one in the middle is Gold Road. And it's like a mile of an underground mine kind of situation. This is what it looks like at surface. It's a picture of the ore. There's one of the piles. Um, if you zoom out far enough, you'll see another big stack of piles um, here. You can see them in this map, uh, old scanned map, and it is what it is. Um, those are old dumps, I guess, from Gold Road and other mines in the area. It was a camp, and, and there's lots of mine waste all over the place. So it's worth having a look around and some of these patented claims that have mine waste sitting on them, you know, it raises a question. Was that mined there? Is there more action to be had there? Um, can we look at the waste itself and figure out if something's there? Hmm. You know, how well picked over is this area right now? What kind of dimensions are we talking about? Here's a line on a map somebody drew. Here's me measuring that line, talking over 600 meters. Okay. Here's lat long coordinates. This is what 620 meters looks like at Lexington. And it will fit on our property where we have mineral and surface rights. So <laughs> we are in a mining scenario, potentially at Lexington, if there's an ore body for us. <laughs> there you go. go. Go figure. And what's in between us? Oh, a big pile of 
dumps from the Oatman district historically. Okay, cool. And who's up there in the north of us? Uh, well, how far away is that? 10 miles, I think? That's the Moss Mine, Northern Vertex. And on a regional basis, it's a really cool area. If we look around at different directions and orientations, we start to see some pretty exotic things with local geology. Um, one thing that I want to do is hyperspectral imaging of this region on a you know hundred mile basis or two more and hunt for lookalike areas um, nearby that are not staked and I want to search for some of those and stake some of those and take some exploration programs out there and do um, future you know forward looking exploration work I also want to do production here at Lexington. So this is called the Lexington Mine. It's a beast. Don't know what the historic production was. There's some small amount of dumps at surface that's been sampled half ounce per ton gold. There's three gram per ton material in outcropping silicified veins, I think, um, that stick out. They're one of the distinctive features of gold veins in the Oatman camp is these large silicified quartz veins um, that are exposed partly and you get down below you get to one of the dot the water table is at depth you get to where the water table is either current or paleo historic setting and you can find metal endowments at the water table um, because the oxidation process of the veins at surface that you're looking at here um, creates a sulfide drip that concentrates the metals in a particular zone and that's what they mined here they got deep enough at gold road to do that maybe because the may the reason that the old timers may have been able to get down enough to the super gene at gold road is that this one's up on a hilltop look at lexington look at gold road you're up on the top of a hill what so who cares well how much water is there today Maybe Lexington and Gold Road were part of the same rock unit that got this, these gold veins like this. You know, they're seen out in all kinds of places, this distinctive feature. So there's some similarities there. Um, but look at a structural setting. They're, they're far enough away that something, you know, there's a hill in between them. The elevation of Lexington is much lower than the one at Gold Road. So Gold Road may be far enough up that the water didn't flood the super gene zone. So in the, in the uh, millions of years ago, Lexington area and Gold Road area could have been at the same elevation. They could have been closer to each other or had other things going on, but the, where they are today could have created a situation where the paleo water table is where the gold got concentrated 10 million years ago. And then something happened to push Gold Road up and out of the current water table in a way that meant that the guys started by mining the outcrop at Gold Road and then they just kept mining it, mining it, mining it. And it was the richest mine they ever saw in the camp because it was this whole super gene zone and, and, and quartz vein structure over a significant scale, right? Um, and they found the rich stuff. And there weren't many places in Oatman where the old timers found super gene. If you read some of the reports and stuff, they talk about it being rare and it's highly representative of what is mined or what will be mined there in the future. Um, but it was kind of a unique finding to have it here at, at Gold Road. Like they look like they're not far apart, right? But look at the difference in elevation, 2,400 feet to 3,400 feet almost. A thousand feet of elevation gain to Gold Road Hilltop versus Lexington. Um, what? Nine hundred feet, three hundred meters of elevation difference. So, does that mean Lexington will be a wet mine? <laughs> Doesn't look very wet to me. Um, you know, if it's been downshifted, maybe sure. Um, but you know, I don't think that we have to go under a lake here, like Saskatchewan or deal with um, uncontrolled water. But then again, I don't know. This could be a very active area. Um, it doesn't look like one, but there is water. You know, there are major um, sources of river surface water and stuff. So there's probably lots of groundwater. Not to 
not enough to probably stop us from mining Lexington or a body. Say there's a super gene zone in Lexington down 300 meters. That's probably mineable. And then the question is, what are the odds that it's there? You know, on this map, you can't even see Lexington. So does it matter? Well, <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Um, what, what would a win look like? What would a win look like at Lexington? If we could find another gold road, what would it look like? Look how they mined it into the hillside. So take that slice and put it at Lexington. Maybe downshift it by cover, you know, whatever surface cover there is there. Um, but those dimensions, these sizes, it's a realistic thing to do. And you can put it in the context of the historic um, work and then and all this stuff with the area. There's a bunch of silver mines and things like that are worth talking about. Um, you know, there's regional markers and stuff in terms of geochemistry that we that we know about for what makes the hot spots on these things. Um, in the literature, even 1920s, they know, they're talking about it. Um, yeah, imagine fluoride as a solvent. It's like pretty cool stuff historically. And again, para resources, they did a great job. Um, and this mining camp deserves another shot. You know, look at it. What a beautiful little cluster. What a fun area. Where are we? <laughs> yes, please. You're telling me we have patented claims out here that we can work? Like, what a great place to be mining. Look at that. Where else? Where Are we undercover? Like, where around us? Up, down, all around. Is there regional potential? What does the regional geodynamics mean for us? Anyways, elevation, I talked about elevation, you know, 300 meter difference between Lexington and Gold Road. That's a large difference. What else? There's so much. Yep. So we're literally dealing with, you know, pretty early stage stuff. <laughs> we know there's mine here of some size, some pit work, old dumps. What does it mean? What does it mean to find that in the middle of nowhere versus what does it mean to find that in a close proximity to an old, a, a new operating mine, right? And then what if you zoom out and talk about Moss Mine as well, right? Where does this go? What kind of toll milling or, or, or purchase agreements? Um, people that sell you sell raw ore to if we can do small scale production, right? And match up and, and provide tonnage. <sighs> Look at these numbers, right? Ounce per ton, historic production numbers, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Let's go. What does it look like at ours? Do we have any reason to think there's thousands of ounces at our camp? Millions, maybe? Unlikely. Unlikely. But if there's tonnage, maybe there's ore. Maybe there's pay, you know? Like, what? This is the super gene. This is power resources planning to do the super gene um, will aura figure it out probably they probably will there's some pretty rich rich stuff down there look you know like I don't know structural integrity and stuff like that's probably fair um, they can probably mine it you get some professionals in there um, but look you know <sighs> It's crazy. You hear these uh, geologists and prospectors talking about what? 80 foot law wide vein. Like, what? what are you talking about? Wow. Okay. Maybe. Um, 
it depends how you map it, I guess, right? What does 230 meters of strike look like? What kind of volumetric calculations can we do, right? What kind of tonnage do we get? You study all this stuff and you get realistic comparisons of, you know, what big winds look like too. What does two kilometers look like? like that's way overkill, right? Well, who knows? It goes up into a drainage with a bunch of cover. We don't know what's going on out there. But if you look, you can kind of see uh, more ridges out there, just a little bit southern offset. And there's there's more lines of weakness, you know, or the erosion. Um, look, there's an operating mine here. These are old dumps. There's old mines up in here and all over the place. Like, it's a wild place to be um, out, in, out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, and my favorite part. Tell me I'm crazy. Tell me that I didn't draw a line out to the original J.J. Moss showing. Go on diggings.com and put on USGS records. And then tell me what's sitting out there. <sighs> Hard to believe, but that's true. And when I first saw that, I was very surprised. I think that's very bullish. <laughs> Just made me think, let's go, right? Where are we? You zoom out on a regional basis, you've got Tim Marsh's Kaaba Perseverance, you've got Big Sandy, you've got Baghdad Mine, boom, you've got more stuff, you've got Tim's Plug, you've got compens Compensation, you've got Elim Mining down there, you've got the Tombstone District, Pfft, what is the Gunsight Mine? You know, put all this stuff on a line and zoom out to the Comstock Load. Spooky, spooky, are we mapping constellations? Look, what are we doing? What is our structural map uh, modeling? Like, do we have any target generation just from structure? Goofy. Of course we do. <laughs> uh, Hyperspectral imaging comes in with that. You know, it, like there's a potential for a lot of advanced modeling techniques where you're integrating multiple layers of data on a regional basis and, and trying to find patterns and structures and, and similarities. Really, really bullish stuff. Um, these they look, you know, they're boom, open pit. Oh, there's another open pit. Like how many of these old stake blocks are old open pit mines? Um, probably quite a few of them. You know, I think they had 200 acres of patented claims at Moss. Maybe more, maybe 250. It's a pretty large area for a patented block. I don't know. Must have been more significant than some of our stuff, right? Like what is what is 20 acres worth? If these guys have 10 times that, what, you know? Well, I don't know, you, you know, what are you doing? High grade, scale, vertical, you know? There's a lot of mining potential in this area. And that line here on the back that's 900 meters long, I think that's the, mine, the line of the pit, basically. So you look and you see that spiked back and how deep they went down right here look you can see the the vein it's showing in the pit they mined right up to the vein like pretty steep wall and then this wall is their back wall this steep one was the face of the mine that's where the ore body sat right along the bit this ridge back up to the top there and so boom you can see it that line that them this drawn is tracing along the back of that and it's a steep vertical plunging ore body and they mined it as a pit now, if you understand mining, you think about it, I don't know how much gold they might have got, but the fact that they did that, that's a precedent for one type of mine. And you compare it to what they did at Gold Road Mine, which was not an open pit. It was selective high-grade underground. Um, interesting to compare the tonnage of Northern Vertex pit and their ore body and how much was mined at Gold Road, right? That's an interesting comparison. And this is before the mine's even in production. Look, April 2018. I don't, I don't think they're stacking ore yet. The plant's not circulating, that's for sure. They're not digging. But that's where they're sitting. They're down slope of the Gold Road mine in part of the silver wash. How much more patented ground is around here? Like, what are we doing? These guys have a very large land package here out in the out in this wash 
and a staked ground. So boom, go to it. But this patented claim is really where they had to start because they had to fit everything onto one postage stamp. Um, I think they made a mistake doing an open pit. I would have loved to have seen a vat leach, pressurized vat leach, maybe with Enviro leach rather than cyanide solution too, um, for the environmental boost and for the lower footprint, right? Maybe you have to do more rock work to crush it and, and to and separate it, but I would rather see vat leach than pit or heap leach here because space is such a premium with your 200 acres, right? Um, so you can shrink the footprint of the operations on this mine by doing what Gold Road does, right? By having an underground mine. Um, we don't have basically any information I don't that I know of on a technical basis for what's happening at Gold Road or is not public. They don't have a 43101 or it doesn't have a report on it. That's for sure. They're, they're reporting profits on it but I don't have a technical presentation on Gold Road from their website or anything. And the Moss Mine, to be honest, I think the Moss Mine is 2018, 2019, 2021. It's getting near mined out. Look, you know, like how much deeper can that pit go? And are they going to shift to underground mining in that ore body? Um, you tell me. Do they have the setup ready for underground mining? If they've mined out their ore body along the top edge of the property and they need to shift to underground mining, does that underground mining, <laughs> does that go on the heat bleach? Probably not. Could they sell it to Aura? Yes, of course. That's a good strategy. Would it be profitable? Um, in this market, sure. Yeah, of course. Um, and, you know, oh, too bad. They can't put it themselves on the heat bleach. Well, look, if they wanted to, they could. They could keep stacking ore there and they could just do higher grade material on the top of the pad if they want. Or or they could down blend whatever high grade they get underground, higher grade, underground, head grade, let down blend it so that it matches what's on the pit today. Um, I think down blending would be a terrible mistake. I think they should concentrate it before they put it on the heap. And I think they should do the innovative stuff they have to do with the heaps to disturb them. Because when you circulate the fluids, the fluids create these pathways and they repeat on those pathways. And over time, they selectively uh, leach out the rock. And so a, a, a pad could be down to sub 50%, you know, of what it started at potentially. And you could go in and you could do a bunch of air blasting on it that like disturbs the whole pit, the whole heap. And you're, recovery, I think, can go back up to like 60% plus of what it was originally, just by perturbing a large pit. I don't know if that's true, but I think I like I think that that is possible. And maybe if you include dumping high grade concentrate on the top of the heap, and really upping your fluid circulation, then you could really supercharge your pit. You could double charge it. You could perturb it so that it, it has these new pathways to develop. And you could load it from the top with high-grade um, primer. You know, that would be a lot of extra handling costs and, and crushing costs on, on everything. It's an expensive way to make money, but it may, it may breathe like generations of new life into your heat because whole heap leach operations are kind of boring. They're like oil wells in a bit, but you know, maybe they're a little more expensive to operate because keeping circulating fluids going with the cyanide leach isn't ongoing. It's probably more difficult than collecting barrels of oil and separating out water or whatever. So lots of opportunity here, lots of opportunity to improve on what other guys in the area are doing. So how long is it before Aurora Gold Road takes out Northern Vertex Moss Mine? I'm surprised it didn't happen already. You know, if Aurora was smart, they might have done that. Um, but that's my opinion. So here we are sitting at Lexington and we're thinking about how this is 300 meters lower than Gold Road. And so if the Gold Road deposits 100 meters down, 200 meters, 300 meters, how far does that take us here? Um, how much water are we going to hit? Where is the, where's the offset? Where's the structure? What are we thinking about? So do we do a test shaft? Do we ex use the old shafts? How deep are the old shafts? Can we do seismic imaging? to 
find out for sure if there's old shafts and how big they are. Um, LIDAR, handheld LIDAR inside the shafts is big ball in two. Very important program. Um, digital topography maps are very important um, and can be a useful layer of data for pattern recognition stuff too. And then you can combine it with drone LIDAR and stuff like that. And yeah, whatever LIDAR, who cares? Look, look, what do you see, right? Like this area is defined by a lot of these ridgeback mountains. And some of these ridges are significant for gold endowment. Which ones, how much, you tell me. But it's literally what it looks like. So I don't think... I, I see an open pit here. You know, it's a little big going across the highway and like that, but if you stick it out to the right, yeah, sure, you can fit a million kilometer and a half around here. Like that's what we're talking here and that's what we're looking at project-wise. Is there a kilometer and a half? Maybe. Maybe there's 900 meters. You know, if you go all the way out to the JJ Moss show and you have two kilometers plus, and look what's right over here. The Telluride mine, <laughs> one of the richest mines. And the, the point about these rich mines is like they're unique. And so the Telluride was beautiful. And it says something about um, the USGS or Arizona Bureau of Mines, whatever report from the 1930s. It talks about how the Telluride had a bunch of bull courts in the waste dump. And it was like, yeah. This was the most bull, like dead white, uh, plain milky, you know, very boring looking quartz of all the areas was came from a Telluride mine, supposedly. And it might have got mixed in with all the other dumps here and on the other side of town and stuff. But supposedly the, the most bull quartz came from Telluride. But then also some of that bull quartz had crazy high grade in it. So I'm not a geologist, I don't know the story, but something interesting about dead looking rock. Stuff that you think wouldn't have gold in it. And then boom, yeah, high grade. So bullshit or not? Well, let's see. Um, you know, and again, look at the Telluride. It's probably up 300 meters from Lexington, as is JJ Moss. So JJ Moss, Telluride, and then Gold Road, those are all maybe same elevation and all maybe 300 meters above Lexington which puts Lexington maybe, you know, I don't really want to talk about calderas here. This is just, you know, just a, sp a fan of three projects, Telluride, JJ Moss showing, and Gold Road that may be all above Lexington by the same amount. <sighs> so what? What could Lex? So it means like, what could Lexington, how much more is there? In this view, is there a million ounces of gold sitting waiting for us? Where is it? What would it look like if it looked like this or if it looked like that? Pump it up. You got to pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up. You got to pump it up. Pretty sure all three of these red lines are the same length. One kilometer line at Gold Road. This one may be a kilometer and a half, um, but I'd say it's bigger than it needs to be. Um, these guys are mining underground because there's an old underground mine there for them to use. These guys mined a pit because they have patented claims and they said, oh, there's a million ounces if we start with a pit and then go underground. Um, this is a patented block we have that covers one kilometer like this and may have some gold endowment. We don't know how much. Supposedly there's old mines here and supposedly the bell vein is actually located next to the Lexington where the bell vein comes onto. Lexington. Um, it's one of these veins that branch out. There's a whole bunch of names for them and all kinds of stuff. All kinds of research and questions and technical stuff to get into. Um, but that's what the 251 slides looks like. So I'm going to turn it off there and just say sorry for running through it so fast, but um, I hope the audio quality is okay. And Thank you for listening. This is Peter Bell. And what I'm doing here is working on a technical presentation, you know, for this project, for the street. And 
obviously never done anything like that before, but um, there's a lot of depth to this project. <laughs> and there's a lot of room to do a lot of really good technical work um, just on a desktop basis before you even, you know, do things um, like feel, more field work, more staking, um, more option agreements, right? Uh, those are the, really the three interests and the financings. You know, there's all these questions to be determined. You figure it out as you go. Um, but, you know, I think that this little project here deserves a look. 600 meters, you know. Private option deal. That's the funny part. I'm talking about 600 meter long strike that are six kilometers apart along the old Highway 66, Route 66, <laughs> Oatman Road, Oatman Topak. You tell me. <laughs> Too much sauce. Is there anything here? Could we have a mine? Well, this presentation doesn't have the answer to that. <laughs> but start to see the different data sets we have available to put together the answers to that question. Okay? That's what we're doing. Thanks. Goodbye.